Good morning, everyone. How are y'all doing this morning? Final Cut TV and coffee. Let's get a few more people in here. I'll be right with you. I will be right with you. Right with you. Let's just check on a few things. Let's check on a few things and then I'll be right there. Where am I? I'm right here. Of course, I'm right here. We got some things to talk about. <clears throat> As you might expect, fresh back from NAB. But you have to remember one thing. You have to remember one thing. Where is that? Thank you for the thumbs up already. Look at that. Where is that? Let me see. This is the pre-show. That's what you have to remember. There we go. This is the pre-show. Let me just... pre-show. Come on now. Why in the world aren't you going up there like you're supposed to? No, that's why. I got the whole thing locked off. There we go. This is the pre-show. We haven't actually started the show yet. Pre-show, before the real show starts. Because we always have to do a little countdown before we <clears throat> start the show. Let me just check on something here. Well, I guess that's all we're going to do today. As far as spreading the word over there on good old social media, as a matter of fact, I love having my screens back. I have three, a giant 34-inch screen, this screen, and this screen. It's so much better than just having the MacBook Pro screen when I was at NAB. Let me just go over here and check, make sure where we're supposed to be. Check, check, check. And we are back. Yes, we are. Let me just put this up over there. Good old X platform. Just to let people know, we are live. If I could spell correctly. Yes, we are. There. That, there, we are live. Post, there we go. Good morning, everybody. So this is the pre-show, and we'll be back in three minutes to start the actual show. Right? That's what we do.
nope, it's not the pre-show anymore. Where in the heck did that come from? Pre-show gets turned off, and we are in the real show now. Final Cut TV and Coffee, number 61. We have done 61 of these shows, and of course, we're going to be talking about Final Cut Pro, but also about NAB. Thank you very much. Look at those. Always got thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Bunch of them. Already, we just started. We got thumbs up already. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Oh, look at that. I got that turned down. That's not supposed to be turned down. Another one. I turned it down because of the music. There we go. Let's try this again. There you go. There you go. We had a lot of fun at NAB, as usual. We had a lot of met a lot of friends there. A lot of final. We there's some Final Cut Pro people there. Uh, we'll go over that list of the Final Cut Pro people that I met at NAB. Let me just check on one thing. Check, check, check. Is that what, my volume? Yes, it is my volume. Let's do some of these comments first thing. Now look at this. I had to I had to reduce these. When I was at NAB, because they were, I had to enlarge them, but they were too small, so now they're too big. Come on now. It's weird. It's, you, you have to do, now, I didn't want to do that. Why is cam link lock? Lock it. Don't bother the cam link. Here we go. Good morning from Jamaica. Good, hello from the Netherlands. Good afternoon. Absolutely. Fantastic. Good morning from Washington, D.C. Once again, this is Worldwide Final Cut Pro stuff. Good morning, everyone. Sean Beckner. Our friend Don says, welcome back from NAB. Hoping for some good info this morning. And our friend Yari Inanen. Of course. Absolutely. Well, Don says, hoping for some good info this morning. Good info as far as what? There was nothing Final Cut Pro related at NAB, which is not unusual, but we were hoping for an update before NAB, just to give it a little bit of buzz at NAB. Well, that didn't happen. Same as last year, zero buzz at NAB. I didn't even see any of the Final Cut Pro team. I didn't even see any of the Final Cut Pro team. I was there for four days. I didn't see them anywhere. So they were incognito. If they were there, they were hiding from the public or something. I don't know what the heck's going on. I did see one person from the Final Cut Pro team. Let's see who that was. Let me see. This guy. I was out there on the sidewalk outside the convention center talking to friend and look who showed up. Steve Bays. I did get to meet you this time. I know, I know. I didn't really have a place to hang out. I'm just basically walking. Well, there's no Final Cut Pro news, that's why. <laughs> there's no Final Cut Pro centric. I, I'm gonna have to talk to those guys. No, you do that. <laughs> So our friend Steve Bay says, I'm going to have to talk to those guys about not doing presentations at NAB. See, that's exactly what I'm saying. No, no, let me just change that setting. Nobody was talking about Final Cut Pro at NAB except for me. I was going around everywhere trying to find anything Final Cut Pro related. And I, even, you know, when I, we were having breakfast we were having breakfast, Brad Olson and I and his crew were having breakfast over there at the pepper mill and somebody saw my name tag, As a matter of fact, it's right here. Somebody saw my name tag and say, it said, what is that? Or she said, what did, what does it say? I said, it says Final Cut TV and radio. This is what it says, Final Cut TV and radio. And then her boyfriend slash husband started Final Cut. Who uses Final Cut? And boy. That started a 15 minute conversation. And I said, who uses Final Cut? How about 5 million people? He goes, really? I said, yes, really. 5 million people, probably more, are using Final Cut. Don't start nonsense with me about who uses Final Cut or 
Final Cut's not professional or whatever. We as users complain about the the slow pace of updates. That's fine. That's a different issue than saying that who uses Final Cut. That guy said that. I have the whole conversation because I had my GoPro, not my GoPro. I had my Action Four camera recording. It just is recording a lot of the time I was live. I mean, a lot of the time I was doing things. So it was recording when he started that conversation, and then I started into him, and then Brad came over. <laughs> he said somebody should do a documentary about Final Cut Pro and. I pointed to Brad and say, well, there you go. It's already done. Strangest thing from NAB. This is the strangest thing. So NAB was great. Absolutely enjoyed it, as I usually do. The lack of any Final Cut Pro activity, there was no buzz about Final Cut Pro anywhere. Nothing. No event. I didn't see anybody from the Final Cut Pro team anywhere. They, I, you know, I was all over that place for four days. Ran into Steve Bays, who used to be on the Final Cut Pro team, but I didn't see anybody from the Final Cut Pro team. Nobody, you know, there was no buzz at Final by Final Cut Pro at all. I was going around to plug-in manufacturers, and then whenever I talked to somebody, I'd bring up Final Cut Pro, bring up Final Cut Pro, bring up Final Cut Pro. I was the only person doing anything Final Cut Pro related. I mean, FM, excuse me, FMC had some Final Cut Pro classes. They had four different instructors teaching Final Cut Pro classes. They did have that. So Eric says, seems like a fairly mundane MN, uh, NAB, regardless of no Final Cut Pro news. No, it wasn't actually. It was very, very exciting. A lot of things. I mean, Black Magic just blew the roof off the place. Their, 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 their presence is overwhelming at NAB. Overwhelming at NAB. And they had a major update to Final, to uh, DaVinci Resolve 19. I downloaded it before I left for NAB. Just, listen, here's, what, here's the deal. I use DaVinci Resolve for anything transcription, anything caption related. I have the studio version. So, in version 18, one year ago, they introduced text-based editing. However, it was text-based editing in the browser. In other words, you would pull up, you would transcribe a clip, right? <clears throat> and then the text that you transcribe would come up in a separate floating window. You would select pieces of text if you wanted to just, let's just say delete. So suppose I had a whole paragraph of text I wanted to delete. I would select the text. It would be selected in the browser viewer clip. And then you can press delete. I'm sorry. That's not the way it works. Sorry. You would select text that you wanted to keep. Select text in the text window and then drop it in the timeline. Select group of text you wanted to keep and then drop it in the timeline. Select, drop, select, drop, select, drop. That's how version eight, 18 worked. Now, with version 19, you select a clip in the timeline. So now, with the, when, once you transcribe and the transcription window comes up, instead of selecting things you want to keep, you select things you want to get rid of. And you select paragraph, two paragraphs, and press the ripple delete key, and it ripples the clip in the timeline. You don't have to drop clips in the timeline like you did before. Major, major update. The other thing that I'm going to just mention about Resolve, they finally got a scrolling timeline in the edit page. They've had it in the cut page. They call it a stationary playhead, and it's different than Final Cut Pros. It is indeed a stationary playhead. Their playhead now, if you turn it on, you don't have to use it if you don't want to. I use it all the time. The playhead is stationary exactly dead center, and the clips scroll underneath the playhead. So if you want to move something, you can't move the playhead in Resolve 19, which is a little bit weird because you can move it in Final Cut. You can't click on the playhead and make it move. You have to grab the clips and move them under the playhead. That's how it works, and but that's okay though, because it's still, it's the same thing as the scrolling timeline, stationary plate, the same thing. So those are two big things that came in Resolve 19. So 
And anytime there's any transcription, anytime there's any captioning, um, go right to resolve, period. Final Cut doesn't have it. Third-party plugins, I understand they're pretty cool. I'm glad they're there. But until Final Cut gets it natively, it's not going to be my first choice for doing transcription. You don't need to do transcription if you're doing a music video. That's not necessary. If you're doing a short clip, no, I don't use it for that. I mean, if I'm going to... My main editor is still Final Cut, so if I'm going to just do editing, I'm going to be doing Final Cut, and if I want to put captions on a short clip, well, then I'll take that over to Resolve and add the captions and stuff, so. Black magic having big news at NAB is also mundane. I disagree with you. We have different meanings of the word mundane. Mundane means not exciting. It's very exciting. It was very, very exciting. The buzz was absolutely dominated by Blackmagic Resolve. There was a plus, Hedge had some great news. Sam Messman is over there at Hedge now. I talked to Emery from Frame.io. For, he was very, very cordial. I was over there. We were over there. Over, I, they, he's in part of Adobe now, so I went over to the Adobe booth and talked with them for a few minutes. I didn't say anything about Final Cut Pro, though they could see it said Final Cut TV. And he, we, we talked for about five minutes, because it's ten minutes maybe. I said, I don't understand the difference between Frame.io, between Hedge, between uh, Lucidlink, between Strata. They're all, they are all to me, they're all... They're, they're confusing. They seem like they're doing some of the same things, but they're not. Well, I, now I know. I know, because he explained it to me, and I also got an explanation from the Strata people, Mike, Michael Cioni's uh, new company with his brother. So this is one of the things. Speaking of, speaking of, let me just turn this on. That shouldn't be there. From last position, that's correct. So if you saw that, that's our good friend, Steve Bays. Steve Bays. I did get to meet you this time. I know, I know. I didn't really have a place to hang out. I'm just basically walking. Well, there's no Final Cut Pro news. That's why. <laughs> there's no Final Cut Pro centric. I, I'm going to have to talk to those guys. No, oh, you do that. <laughs> so he said he's going to have to talk to those guys. Let me get my uh, camera up so you can see. Uh, movies. Where am I? Weird. Movies. Now, why don't I have movies are here? Let me put up a camera. Not that one. No, I'm not doing that one. Don't be ridiculous. Face time. No. No. Delete. I'm deleting these. This is. I used the FaceTime camera when I was. No. Why are you doing this? Why are you pulling up FaceTime camera? I don't want FaceTime camera. I want the other camera. Why am I not getting a choice? Let me just do this then. I'll just do this. This is what I have to do. No cam link. And I don't want it big. Hold on one second. Shape. Let's do a circle. And let's do, resize it down to this. Let's do a little quick one. I'm just, cause this, this was all adjusted when I was at NAB. It was really very, very bizarre. It's not bizarre. What I mean is, hold on one second. White. Let's go with white. There we go. What I mean is, setting up for... Setting up for NAB when I'm on my laptop with just one little 16-inch screen versus all this real estate I have in my studio. Completely different scenario. So look who I got a chance to, to interview. I got a five-minute interview with this guy. Can I get a picture with you? Yeah, no problem. By the way, fantastic, fantastic Thanks. keynote Friday. Grant Petty Absolutely from Black Magic. Fantastic. It was two, over two hours long. Yeah, it was really I, long. I love Resolve <laughs> like IT. The, um, I it just got longer and it's like, well, what do you do? You kind of cut so much out that you don't make any sense. Right, right. It's a bit tough to know how much to cut out. But 
Great job. I'm glad it was useful. Like, it, that's the thing. I always think that, like, I just I sort of deliver all the detail, and some of it's good. Most of it's good, you hope. Sometimes there's some caveats or bad, not bad things, but like, no, oh, it can do this or can't do that. I reckon if you just get all the information out there, and everyone else can kind of work out, oh, yeah, okay, that's important, that, that fixes that, or this is that. So you don't quite know. Like, when I was an engineer working in post, you kind of just tell people what's going on, and then they kind of know whether it's good or not. I don't actually, like, I'm hoping it's good. He says he's hoping it's good. Well, it was great. When you're saying Chris says, Chris, I mean, I'm sorry, Eric says, but having... But black magic having big news at MAD is also mundane. They do it most years. That's not mundane. You can say it's expected, but it's not mundane. It's very, it's very, very exciting. There is a lot of buzz at the black magic booth as usual. They always dominate NAB with their with their products and their cameras. And I, I I'm a Lumix person, Panasonic Panasonic Lumix. I do not do, uh, haven't done any Blackmagic cameras. I was going to get the very first HD camera, that really, that HD one, but I never got one. So I never bought into their system. But I, listen, two things I really love. I love DaVinci Resolve, and I really like the Blackmagic camera app that they develop for free. They give it to us for free. And they updated both of those the week before NAB. So... Chris Smith says, BMD also doing subscriptions for the enterprises that need it, but want to keep the one-time purchase as well. That's the way you do subscriptions. That's the way you do subscriptions. You give them, if you want to do subscriptions, do the option of having a one-time purchase or the subscription, and people can choose. Your customers, listen to your customers. Something that Adobe does not do, because if they did it, 30 to 40% of their customers would rather not have a ran monthly ransom they have to pay for their for their applications. They would rather pay a one-time fee the way it used to be. As a matter of fact, I have a version of Adobe Suite, but it's for the PC that I got. I'm not even sure how I got that. But I have an unopened box with a serial license. I don't even know if it's any good anymore. I don't know how that works. But, so there were, there were a lot of exciting things. There was a lot of buzz. I came on here the last couple of weeks and I said, I would expect NAB to have the same kind of numbers they had last year or even a little bit more. Well, they didn't have a little bit more. They had almost the exact same number, 60, the low 60s, 60,000, 61,000, 62,000, something like that. It's almost exactly what they had last year. Same, exact, in the same category. So it didn't go down. It went just, it stayed it stayed stationary. But as far as it was not mundane if you weren't there, I mean, it, you may have been bored at home, but that doesn't, I'm not bored at home. There's always, always things at NAB. There's, there's hundreds and hundreds of things at NAB. LumaFusion announced their, their, they previewed their version five that's coming out. It looks fantastic. There's exciting news from, well, from, well, like I said, I talked to Emery Wells and then heads for video right before NAB, they bought Arctic Whiteness. And I talked to the CEO about that, the founder, Paul from Hedge. We talked about what, what's going on with, with that. And he said, it's not a moneymaker. It's not about making money. It's just about keeping the product alive. They've already fixed some bugs that the original developers had and could not fix. That was exciting. And then where is Sam Messman? Sam Messman is now at Hedge for video for this NAB. So we talked to Sam. Haven't seen him. Well, we did see him at the Creator Summit, but he wasn't with anybody at that point. He was Last year he was with OWC. He's no longer with OWC. He's wrapped all that up, I think, the first of the year. So now he's with Hedge for video. So... Let's go over there, watch a the little bit of that. We're not going to watch the whole clip, so you can watch them online. There's so Paul. we're here at NAB 2024. How do you like it so far? Everything going okay? It's really good so far. Yeah, it's a really nice crowd. And we're talking to Paul, founder, founder of Hedge. That's a great title. That, oh, thanks. I like that better than technical, like CEO. Founder sounds, people understand that. You found Hedge. 
So, Sam Messman's here. And Sam Messman is with Hedge now. I am with Hedge now. I'm the new product marketing manager for what is, in my opinion, the coolest thing I have legitimately seen in years. So I happened to talk to Paul when I saw this drop at the Creative Summit. I was like, hey, man, this is awesome. I haven't seen anything quite like this. It represented a little bit of a new workflow paradigm. And I was like, if there's a way for us to collaborate. And then a few months later, uh, I'm now here on the team, uh, basically helping coordinate the launch and get this off the ground. And it is very, very cool. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm even more excited now with Hedge. I, I just realized I had the mute on. So I've ha always had uh, Offshoot, the uh, versioning where you copy clips from media cards to different hard drives. I like that because I copied two hard drives at the same time. So I renewed my license for that, and I also renewed my license for Arctic Whiteness. They're now calling it Arctic, I think, the new version. So I renewed my license for that as well. So that, they have some very, very cool products. Very, very cool products. And the other thing is, so here's Chris says, hope auto captions come to LumaFusion in version five, but can see it better if AI stuff comes to iOS via Apple and API. I could see it in a version six next year. I think now that they have a sophisticated key framing uh, window coming in LumaFusion. It's just like the, it's a separate window that comes up and it's very, very cool. You can do very sophisticated keyframe movings in LumaFusion version five coming out later this summer. It's an in-app purchase. It's gonna be 20 bucks, but they don't charge subscriptions for their app. Their app is $29. A lot of times you can see it on sale for $19, usually twice a year. So around Christmas time and maybe some other times, but and then I'll get this keyframing window that pops up. It's much more sophisticated than Final Cut Pro's keyframing. Keyframing for Final Cut Pro, as I've said for years, it's like keyframing on a Netch a Sketch. So it has a couple of neat features, but boy, is it rudimentary compared to Motion, their other Pro app, compared to this new version coming out in LumaFusion. As far as captioning and LumaFusion, they know it. They know it's their top request, so I'm sure they're working on it. Mute button. Make sure I turn it back on again. I would not mind that Apple made collaboration and fast file sharing through Fast Secure service and it's a subscription option for people who need it. But let Final Cut Pro be a one-time purchase. That would be. Yeah, that would be fine if they did some add-ons that maybe, like you said, transcription. But here's the thing with transcription. This is what I found out at NAB. When I'm saying I found out, this is what I was told at NAB. It's nothing to do with coming from Apple. Apple wants to do on-device on transcriptions. They don't want to send it anywhere to the cloud, which is less secure they want to do transcriptions on their hardware only, not through the cloud. If that's the case, that might that, you know, supposedly the version four, the M4 chip, has some kind of AI built into it, so that's probably going to be helpful for that. So if that's the excuse for captions and transcription, to me that's acceptable. If they're working on a library that does it internally, you no know sending to the cloud, you don't have to worry about if you're movies, you have to worry about sending your script somewhere you have no control over it and ends up in China or somewhere. You don't have to worry about that if that's the case. Now, it could be. But here's the deal with Final Cut. Final Cut is a slow moving NLE train. Okay, it's not this bullet train like they have in Japan. It's a very slow moving NLE bullet uh, train. It's not the bullet train. I don't think it'll ever be the bullet train. 
which means it's slow and steady. It's sometimes frustratingly slow. It, it's, I mean, to users, to end users, people who like it, don't worry. I'm not worried about the people who say they're going to jump ship. I, that doesn't mean anything to me. Jump ship if you want to jump ship. It doesn't make any difference. I can use more than one NLE, and I do. But uh, the Final Cut Pro is this slow. It's it's excruciatingly slow sometimes. Slow, steady train, NLE train. The other ones are absolutely zipping by Final Cut. Um, DaVinci Resolve is a perfect example. Yes, it's zipping by, it's zipping by, it's zipping by. And yes, I know all about the stability and the uh, efficiency of the app. That's not a feature. Every developer should be should have number one on the development cycle. Make sure it's stable. Make sure it's efficient. Make sure it's optimized. That's not a feature. Okay, everybody has to do that. That's not a feature. Do people keep saying, "Oh, I'd rather have this stability and efficiency rather than new features." You can have both. You think the Final Cut Pro team doesn't know how to do both? Of course they do. That's the basic, basic thing that every app should always have, stability and optimization. That's not a feature. We want features on top of that. The code should always be stable. The code should always be efficient. Every build. And, and then people will say something like, Oh, but Final Cut Pro is so much more stable than the other ones. No, it's not. It's a, the same kind of same kind of issues it has. Last year we had three bug fixes in a matter of three months because they because it was crashing and stuff. So we had three bug fixes in three months. One of them was two weeks. One of them was two weeks and two days, and one of them was like three weeks, right in a row. One, two, three bug fixes. So. It's not like Final Cut Pro has no bugs. It has bugs like everybody else does. Now, you know, I still use Final Cut. I think Apple Corp, uh, Corporate is holding back Final Cut Pro. They need to at least promote it more and have events for their pro apps. There is nobody that does more for their apps than Blackmagic Design. Nobody. Final Cut Pro has a very, very cool and a very, very efficient documentation, the manual, user manual. Absolutely, it has that. But Nobody has more training and better documentation than Black Magic for DaVinci Resolve. They have incredible, incredible. Let me just see if I can pull this up here. They have tutorial videos. They have extensive manuals, user manuals, dedicated manuals, dedicated tutorial videos for each one of their products. I don't think that Apple has a single video tutorial besides one second or 30 seconds for any of their products. They don't, I don't think they have any kind of tutorial system. Blackmagic has extensive, extensive tutorials. Now, you may say Blackmagic needs it more because it's complicated. It is, it's complicated. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that, but Blackmagic does a great, great job with support for their products with tutorials and documentation after pages of documentation. Now, Final Cut's got a very, very good user manual. You can get it as a PDF or you can get it in books. I think it's up to 1,200 pages, maybe something like that. So that is really good, but it stops there. Final Cut Pro has no, nobody doing video tutorials, 20 minute, 30 minute uh, video tutorials like Blackmagic has. Nobody, Final Cut Pro does not have the uh, training, they DaVinci Resolve, Fusion, Fairlight, they all have, they have training sessions every year for free, for like a week, 
for like a week. You don't have that in, in Apple, the Apple ecosystem. Future Media Concepts has some Apple training, but not the free version that like Blackmagic has. So let's go to some more things from NAB. So we had a comment, Eric said it was mundane. It was not mundane, not at all. When they can do auto subscriptions in different languages, you mean transcriptions in different languages that work with minor hiccups in their podcast app, they can do it in Final Cut Pro as well, but are probably done, not done on device. I think that's, this is somebody told me, I'm not going to say who it was. I don't know if it's official, but they say that Apple wants to do it on device, probably. Or they want to set up their own secure. They want security, but they don't want people sending transcriptions and you don't know where they're going. Right, you're getting transcriptions for free, but maybe they're going to China. Maybe they're going over here. Maybe they're going somewhere else. And people are culling data from that. That's not what they want to do it. But that's only one aspect. That's only one aspect. Auto captions, text trans text editing are big two big ticket items that I expect to see certainly in 10.7. Whether we see them in the next update, and I'll say this again, since we didn't get the update for Final Cut Pro at NEB, which, listen, they've done it in the past. They've updated Final Cut Pro for NAB 2022. Okay, two years ago, they updated Final Cut Pro right before NEB. So they do it all the time. Uh, they do it 50% of the time for NEB. They did not do it this time. They didn't do it last year. Dead. Final Cut Pro is completely dead at NEB. Is that okay? Nah, not really. Not really. They, they should put some effort into exposing Final Cut Pro to a larger market rather than just the faithful. If you're preaching to the choir, it's not really doing any good. You gotta, we want to reach outside of that area and show more things. I wish they would do a, a Final Cut Pro session every NAB. That's my wish. Did I, do I think they're going to do it? Obviously they're not. Did you see any iPhone external lenses, other gear for us content creators? Well, weirdly, Rode came out with some kind of contraptions for the for the iPhone. There's like a magnetic mount and it's like octopus arms and all these things. Here's the thing for me. I use my iPhone on a gimbal. 95% of the time, I don't want to use a handheld cage. Okay, now the exceptions are this, cages, I used cages four years ago, five years ago, I would use a cage. You can't get a steady shot like you can on a, on a hardware gimbal. So I use a gimbal all the time. Now, if I want to use lenses, neutral density filters mounted on the camera, they have to be mounted on the camera somehow, I have a bigger cage. I think it's a small rig cage. But I put that cage on a bigger gimbal. I still use the cage, but I still put that on a gimbal. Now, the gimbal that I have is a dual-purpose gimbal. I can use it with an iPhone cage with bigger lenses or ND filters, anything that's heavy that the gimbal can't handle natively. And it's also strong enough for my Lumix S5 Mark II X with the nice lens on it. So if I need a cage, if I need the lenses, if I need the neutral density filters, I'll put it in a, in a small rig cage, or I have another cage. It's actually bigger than a small rig. It's a universal cage. And, but I'll put that cage in my bigger gimbal. So I've, in either case, I use a gimbal. Now I'm not talking about if I'm walking down the street and something happens, I'll just pull it out and do this and I'm ready to go and I can shoot. Okay. Audio for me is plenty close. It'll be fine if I need good audio. Somebody in front of the camera, behind the camera, it's if they're close enough, it's okay. This is just for something quick, something unexpected. If you watched when I filmed Steve Bays, well, I didn't have my camera out. I didn't have my iPhone camera. I would have missed that opportunity. I had my GoPro recording. If I didn't have my GoPro recording, 
I would have missed that whole Steve Bay's interaction. So I had that going a lot of the times. My Go, I keep saying GoPro. It's Action 4. It's not the GoPro. I don't like the GoPro 11 and 12. I like, like either one of them. It's the Action 4, the DJI Action 4. If I hadn't been recording, I would have missed that. So it's a lot of times during NAB that I was recording with my Action 4. It's obvious. It's right there around my neck. It's recording. And I recorded a lot of interactions because I wasn't planning on doing a setup and having my phone and stuff. So external lenses and other gear for content creators, yes. Tilda, Tilda, I think was one that had a bunch of new new cages and things. And Rode came out with this really clunky looking system. I'm kind of surprised with them. Um, I'm kind of surprised. They're they're like turning into a clunk factory. Let me just look them up. I use I use their apps. Let me tell you. I use two of their apps all the time. Now they did, the system that they came up with at NEB is weird, but let me pull that back out of there. Pull that back out. Um, they did come out with the, let me pull this up. Hold on one second, please. There we go. They did come out with this, the Interview Pro, pristine wireless audio in your hands. Now, this looks interesting because it records a backup recording inside the microphone. It records internally 32-bit. So this looks pretty cool. Now, I guess it's a built-in transmitter, and it, it connects to existing road receivers. I think so. So that's pretty cool. Now let me see what, let me see what's going on here, though. Headphones, accessories. Microphone clips. No, 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 no. View all. Let's go to view all. I'll see what, if they come out with what's coming up next. Uh, that's going to be a problem. So I got this. I got this and I use it for the other. Let me see what else they have here. No, that's not it. Let me go back. Products. Let me see what they released at NAB. Headphones, interfaces, and mixers. Accessories. Cases and bags, mounts and grips, maybe mounts and grips. Yeah, so this thing, okay, the iPhone cage. This is nothing special, okay? This is nothing special. This has been out, people have had this for years, years. Moman has one. This is nothing out of the ordinary, okay? Now, they do have a lot of quarter 20 threads around, I think more than most people, so that is cool. But it's not innovative by any stretch of the imagination. So this is what it looks like. This is what I was taught. I have a cage like this. I think it's a small rig. It's not magnetic. It's just a clamp. So let me see what else we have here. Mounts and grips. This is the thing that I thought was really strange. This thing. Magnetic mount. Once again, this is not innovative. This is a clunky system. It's just weird. Why would I do this versus just putting things on a cage? It just, this is what it looks like. It's just, to me, it's just strange. This is just a strange, clunky system. I, instead of doing this, I'll just use a cage, personally. It's just weird that I thought that was one of the things that they came out with. I mean, how much R&D did you spend on figuring that out with a couple of arms sticking out all around the, the phone? Anyway, it's not...
It's not that innovative. Bingo. I was looking for something like Road Reporter Mike. Is it wireless and iOS compatible for phones? And that's Rich. I want one. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. The microphone is pretty cool because it records 32 bit internally. Very smart. And I think it records, I'm pretty sure it records to existing road receivers. So that's very cool. Though I know this narrative is old, I think for me, the progress of the next Fonda cover per update will inform, support, or encourage the decision for switching to DaVinci Resolve. Listen, Tyler, I'll let me, let me just say something. Don't worry about it being old. It's, it's, it's actually contemporary. It's, it's an ongoing discussion. People are saying it all the time. I think most people that leave, that want to leave Fonica Pro are going to DaVinci Resolve. That's where I'd go. If for some reason Fonica Pro no longer existed, I'd just go to DaVinci Resolve. Hands down. And LumaFusion. I say it all the time. LumaFusion as well. LumaFusion is such... Final Cut Pro and LumaFusion are the most fun apps to do NL, to do uh, video editing on. Both of those are just completely enjoyable. Now, LumaFusion, you got to learn learn some things like you do with Final Cut when you first start with it. But let me tell you something about LumaFusion. 29 bucks works on the iPhone. Final Cut for iPad does not. It works on the iPad. It works on older iPads. Final Cut for iPad does not. It has the best multicam way to do multi-can clips it's much better it's, it's better than final cut pro for ipad and for that same 29 dollars it works on the macintosh on m1 m2 or m3 apple computers 29 bucks iphone ipad or the mac and the mac version is getting a little more sophisticated and a little more sophisticated and they have a person who who works on the Mac version to make sure that it's a good experience for people for 29 bucks. One time fee, one time fee. Then they have add on packages. So don't worry about the narrative being old. It's very contemporary. It's still ongoing. Tyler, you can talk about it as much as you want. I, um, I am always, always waiting for the next version to final cut. I am, every time they don't, listen, when, when 10.6, what was the last version of 10.6? 10.6, whatever it was, before 10.7 came out, I had no idea that they were going to get a scrolling timeline in 10.7, but after 13 years, they, they did it. 12 and a half years, they did it. So don't give up on it. And it, the thing is, like I said, Final Cut Pro is a slow, steady train. It's like an old train that's, uses steam, coal. It's like a coal burning train. Steady, but it's very slow compared to the bullet trains. All there, everybody else is AI this and AI that and AI this. So be aware of that. If you're going to stick with Final Cut Pro, I don't see them leapfrogging anybody at this point. They may surprise us. They come out with some features that are nobody saw coming, but I don't see that happening. I think they're going to keep on being, they're like a coal-fired train. They're just going to keep on going slow, steady. Technology's been around for a while. Now, maybe with version 11, there's going to be some leapfrogging, but I don't see it coming. So you have to be aware of that. Don't use Final Cut Pro and expect them to be leapfrogging the other NLEs. They're, the other NLEs is, are so far ahead of Final Cut Pro as far as modern features and stuff. It took 12 years to get dupe detection in Final Cut Pro. It's an industry standard. All the other NLEs have had it. It took 13 years to get a scrolling timeline. Am I complaining about the actual scrolling timeline? No, it's a fine scrolling timeline. But it still took 13 years. Frustratingly slow development pace of Final Cut Pro. Some people like that. Some people say, I don't want all these features. I don't want, I want stability and whatever. I, that's a bunch of baloney. Don't make excuses for the Final Cut Pro team. I'm just tired of waiting and not having professional tools that people want to hire for. I completely understand. I am not dismissing that. I am not dismissing that. What I'm not going to do is have people come on here and just say ridiculous things about Final Cut Pro. We know it's an app that we all love. It's just 
frustratingly slow in development. I don't see that changing, not in the near future. Would you w rather use iPhone action cam features versus using a cage? Action cam. So you mean the built-in stability? If I use a cage, if I use a cage handheld like this, I could use the action cam features because it's pretty darn good in Final Cut Pro. It's, I mean, it's pretty darn good in, in the iPhone 14, 15 Pro Max. Alyssa says, I have a copy of Blackmagic DaVinci Resolve for transcription, but I'm not jumping ship from Final Cut Pro. I only focus on features that I need and going to use. So Final Cut Pro has been, you know, my main NLE for years. I don't see that changing in the near future. So I'm with you, uh, but I, here's the problem. When, you know, the, when, when Final Cut Pro is so slow, Thank you very much for the thumbs up. Fantastic. We appreciate it. When Final Cut Pro is so slow in development, it is frustrating for a lot of us. And we can say that as much as we want, so the Final Cut Pro team keeps on hearing that, hearing that, hearing that. They're not necessarily, hold on one second. They're not necessarily, they hear it, but they're not going to act on it. So they hear the complaints about the slow development pace. That's not really nudging them. It's not really nudging them. They're going to continue. At this point, they're going to continue their slow, steady pace of Fonica Pro development. Now, on the one hand, you could say the slow development, it, it ensures a stable product that is efficient, et cetera, et cetera. All the other analysts have to do the exact same thing. They got to make sure that their stuff's stable. They got to make sure it's optimized for Apple Silicon, et cetera, et cetera. So that only goes so far. But I understand, listen, I understand if I were building a house, would I want the quickest house built? No. I want the person that has most experience and does it on a good keel, but nice and steady. So I understand that, but it's still frustrating. If I want to get a house built and the mortgage says I have to have it done by such and such a date and the contractor says, I can't do that because I'm, because I'm going to be slow and steady. It's frustrating. So I understand both sides of it. Features I would love. Is better support on my Apple Vision Pro like editing special video and editing 360 video. Apple's already pre-announced that's coming. Apple has already pre-announced, I thought they did it in 2023, that they're going to that Final Cut Pro, there's going to be a Final Cut Pro update that includes spatial editing for the Vision Pro. So that's coming. Whether that's in 1072, which is the next scheduled update or not, I don't know. But it absolutely is coming. Apple's pre-announced it. It'll be here. So here's what I expect. The timeline for Final Cut Pro. I was not confident, and I've been saying that for weeks, that we were going to get an updated NAB. And I said I would not take that bet. If somebody wanted to bet it, I would not take that bet because I was not confident it was going to happen. It's too bad it didn't happen because it would have helped my promotion of Final Cut Pro during NAB. Right now, like I said, I didn't see anybody from the Final Cut Pro team, not one person. I usually see one or two people from the Final Cut Pro team and have a meeting, not meeting, just talk with them. Zero. I didn't see anybody from the Final Cut Pro team. Were they there? They must have been incognito and hiding. I didn't see them anywhere. I went to parties. I went to a lot of events. I didn't see them anywhere, so I have no idea who was there and who was not there. Do I think they are there? Yes, I think they were there, meeting with developers. But what about your customers? What about your 5 million Final Cut Pro users? Thank you very much for the thumbs up. What about them? Why aren't you concerned about taking care of your customers? Developers, I understand that's important. 
but you should be taking care of your customers. There's nothing wrong with having a presence for Fonica Pro at NAB. What is possibly wrong with that? What is the downside to, to not having to, to having a presence at NAB? There's no downside to that. It would go a long way to pleasing your customers. The 5 million plus editors have used Final Cut Pro. There's just no reason for not having one. Something. Put up a couple thousand dollars and have an, it has a presentation. In regards to building house, you want it slow and reliable, but you also want the construction crew complying to new and updated building codes. Yeah. And you want to do it on schedule. If one guy says, if one guy says, I can build this in six months, and the other guy says, oh, no, it's going to take me two years to get to that point. Which one are you going to choose? You're, like, stuck. Okay, do I want it in six months, or I want to wait for two years? It's This is what working with Fauna Cut's like. I mean, with, with, the, uh, with the people. Why diss a product you have not used? Which product are you talking about? You mean people that are complaining about Final Cut Pro? Well, I've used DaVinci Resolve, and I've used Numafusion, and I've used Final Cut. I am not switching from Final Cut at this point. I mean, I'm not planning on that. I don't have to switch. I've already paid for it. Okay? If I wanted to use Resolve more, I'll use Resolve more. If I want to use LumaFusion, which I'm planning it this year, DaVinci Resolve 19 looks to be fantastic. Final Cut Pro 10.7 was a good, solid update, but nothing since then. It's been four months. I do expect, this is what I expect. Here's what I expect the rest of the year. I expect, once again, I'm not making bets. I would not make a bet on this. Last year at the Creative Summit, I would have made a bet that 10.7 was going to be introduced. I absolutely would have made that bet. I am not making a bet, but I think there's a higher chance of getting an update to Final Cut Pro in early May when the iPad Pro, the new iPad Pro comes out, because I think they're going to have a new version of Final Cut for iPad. If they have a new version for Final Cut for iPad to help sell the new iPad, of course they're going to have a new version of Final Cut for the Mac. They're not going to release a version of Final Cut for iPad without releasing this, the equivalent version on the Mac. People don't realize that Final Cut Pro is the easiest, reliable, and easiest to use NLE. Obviously, we want auto captions, text-based editing, a lot of other features. CapCut has it, but must still be reliable. I agree with that. I mean, reliability is fine, but that's not a feature, okay? That's not a feature. That should be, that's like saying, well, I want my car to be, to have four tires and a steering wheel. Every car has to have that, okay? Those are basic things that they have to have. On top of that, I want air conditioning, I want power windows, I want good audio system, I maybe want a navigation system. Those are the features. This is good for you to say this. I don't mind a steady pace. It is the slow part that's a problem. I also want Final Cut Pro to be able to use the entire SOC of the M chips and M1. Still not benefit from the M3 upgrade at the moment. Okay, well, that's interesting. I'm, I'm not getting a M2, and I'm not getting an M3. I'll wait for the M4. Now, the M4 is supposed to have some kind of AI stuff built in. I don't understand how that works. Some kind of AI built in. Maybe that will be a good thing to have for text editing. I think some of the features we want will be coming out in the fall. We might have a better idea in 51 days with the WWDC announcement. Bingo. Bingo. So here's what I expect. There has never been a Final Cut Pro update at WWDC. Not a one. Not one single update at WWDC for Final Cut Pro in the history of Final Cut Pro 10, they've previewed things. They previewed a version of Final Cut Pro, and they said it'll come out later this year. Well, later this year is usually December, seven months, six months away, like with the Mac Pro, for example. If they don't, I think they're going to release a new version of Final Cut with the iPad. I think that's imminent between now and WWDC, but very likely when the iPad Pro comes out. Now, since AI is supposed to be a big deal at WWDC, it would not surprise 
surprise me. Hold on. Here's the deal. I was fine the whole time at NAB. 61,000 people. I shook hands with 50,000 of those people. Completely fine. Not even a sneeze. Nothing. Nothing. No, no health problem whatsoever. No sneeze, no nothing. As soon as I got back to Maryland, when, I, when the, the, virtually when the plane landed in Maryland, I started getting throat, ah, this and that. And I'm thinking, and, and my eyes were, and it's like, it's all the pollen that's happening out here. My car was in a parking garage on the top floor, though, nine stories up at BWI. And it was covered in pollen. What the heck's going on? I'm nine stories in the air and my car's... Anyway, my throat, eyes, nose have been affected by the pollen. And as soon as I landed in Maryland, it was just the strangest thing. I'm fine, but it just... I get a little pollen activity. So this is a great comment. I think some of the features we want will be coming out in the fall. What happens in the fall? The Final Cut Pro Creative Summit. The Final Cut Pro Creative Summit. But I think we're going to get a, an update. I hope we're going to get an update between now and the fall. I hope we get an update now. Like this is what happened last year. Last year in May, what happened? They gave us Final Cut for iPad and an update to Final Cut Pro in May. Okay? I think the same thing's going to happen. I think in May, we're going to see an update to Final Cut Pro. What features are in that update? No idea. And then maybe a preview at WWDC for a new version of Final Cut. Not released. That would be highly unusual. Not impossible. I'm not saying that Apple won't do it. I'm saying it's highly unlikely considering the fact that they've never had an update to Final Cut Pro at WWDC. Not one time have they updated Final Cut Pro at WWDC. So, May, an update, 10.7.2, to go with the iPad, new iPad Pro. Maybe a preview of the M4 chip at WWDC and a new version of Final Cut Pro to come out later this year. Well, later this year would most certainly be the Final Cut Pro Creative Summit. At least for a, 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 a uh, public preview. They publicly previewed Final Cut Pro 10.4.4 at the Creative Summit, and it came out in December, like six weeks later. I can see that scenario happening again. So I think something could happen at WWDC, but highly unlikely it'll be a feature update. So Rich, what were the highlights, the iPhone content creating gear from mics to lights and lenses? The highlights were just hardware. They're just the cages, which really are old. The cages are just years. I've been using cages for years. I don't like cages. I like a gimbal. I like a gimbal. Now, I can mount, I have my microphone on the gimbal. I have the Rode Wireless Go on the gimbal. I have lights on the gimbal. I have a different kind of a setup. It's it's an L handle and I put stuff on it. So I like a gimbal. I don't like a handheld cage. Okay. That's old, old school. I don't like that. I like a gimbal. But the cages are still coming out. And I have a, specifically, I have the, let me turn that down. Specifically, I have the small rig iPhone 15 Pro Max cage, and I got it for two reasons. Number one, the quick release handles on it are fantastic. You don't have to screw things in and out. And quick release, it has a little thing you pull on it, it releases. You can put it this way, you can put it this way. And it has built into the cage the Moment M mount lenses, because that's, I have the set of Moment M mount lenses. And this cage has the M mount built in. So that's why I got that cage. But unless I'm doing something quick, if I'm going to be set up for 5 or 10 or 15 minutes walking around, I'm going to use a gimbal. I'm sorry, all the time I use a gimbal. So 
cages, lenses and stuff have already been announced. Cages are the main thing with iPhone stuff. The Blackmagic camera app, which is highly recommended. Don't don't uh, get Filmic Pro. Don't buy Filmic Pro at this point. Don't rent it. It's it's a it's going to be a dead product. They fired the whole team. The geniuses behind it. So, by the way, Final Cut Pro is crashing when I use AU multiband compressor. I, I filed a report to Apple about it. Thank you for following that report. That's good to know. It's kind of funny. Apple says people want CarPlay when buying a new car, so they believe in having cutting-edge features and products, but they doesn't apply to Final Cut Pro. I, you know, I, I a couple years ago I was looking at cars. Well, when I not a couple years ago, five six years ago, and I was oh, I wanted to get the CarPlay. I wanted a good CarPlay. Now I don't even care. I mean, they've they've dropped their supposedly dropped their interest in cars. I don't know about CarPlay. We already have A1 capabilities in the M1 chip hardware, but the M4 may get improved hardware and make AI, A1 AI software options we hope to see later this year even better. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I keep hearing, that the A4 chip has some kind of a new built-in AI thing. So AI is coming. N nobody's going to stop that at this point. The, the train, train has left the station now. When people talk about AI, what do I think about AI? And I say... Didn't you see Terminator? Didn't you see Terminator? I mean, Skynet, th this is exactly what could happen with AI. It's just like a, it's, it could be a, run, a runaway train. So we have to be careful, of course, and that's way beyond me in my lifetime. I'm not going to be overly concerned about it, but I like for people to put in place protections, a kill switch, for example, whatever. The problem with AI, the problem with AI, yeah, I mean, you know, we've seen it all. What is that other series about AI? Let me see what the heck was, I forget what it's called. With the robots and stuff, I forget what it's called. It had Starbuck, that, that, that fighter pilot woman. I really liked her. It had the Cylons. What was the name of that series? I always forget the name. Let me look it up. But same thing, AI. Battlestar Galactica. There you go. Don said it. Battlestar Galactica. That's another series. AI. Okay. So, obviously, that's a ways off, but, I mean, Terminator, we've been watching Terminator for years, right, with Skynet and all nine yards. So, I don't expect the robots to be that sophisticated at this point, but some of the AI itself is just completely wrong, and it's misleading people with information. I mean, we pay attention to what's on the Internet. Google searches, whatever we see... And AI could completely corrupt that process if it's put in the wrong hands. So anyway, let's worry about AI and Final Cut Pro. I don't want to get into the rest of that, but it's, I always find it funny when people say, what do you think about AI? I said, I always say, my stock answer is, did you see the Terminator series? Did you see the Terminator series? That's what AI can become. So just, I hope AI is, improves Final Cut Pro. It seems like text-based editing and auto transcriptions are perfect use for AI. Perfect use for AI. Thank you very much for the thumbs up. Thank you. I don't know why it's pink. Do I get to choose the color? The color for the bubbles? I don't know. Here we go. Just tried to add multiband compressor and Final Cut Pro crashed on me too. Final Cut Pro team, there's your report. Multiband compressor is crashing Final Cut Pro. Make sure you turn it into the uh, Final Cut Pro team. Let me see here. So this is where you want to go. It's dead simple to remember. FCPX.tv. Go to FCPX.tv. Look, 
right here on the main page. Right here. It says, send your requests, bug reports, or feedback to the FCP team. So you don't have to remember where it is. You don't have to remember the address. You don't have to have Final Cut Pro launched. Just go right there, and you can report to the Final Cut Pro team. Okay? Right there, fcpx.tv. Let me see something. Let me just see one thing. Oh, anyway, that's where you want to go. FCPX.tv. It's dead simple to remember. It's right there on the page. Click right here. I keep it right there. It's been there for years. All right. And our friend Eric says, after trying to, to access the graphical interface, not just adding the filter. There you go. So that's a problem if people that use that. I do most of my editing in logic, audio editing. It's because it's a more sophisticated. It's it's way more sophisticated than any NLE, not just Final Cut, but that's why there's Pro Tools. Professionals send their mixes to Pro Tools for films and for television. No matter what they edit in, Avid, Premiere, whatever, they send it out to Pro Tools for the mix. The same with Final Cut. Final Cut has some rudimentary audio and some people are fine with that that's i'm not complaining about it. i'm not saying that you can't be fine you can be fine with it it's not enough for me okay i need more sophisticated audio tools so i use logic all right let's go on here now let's go here what else do we have these the, these were the best lumafusion people Stir the sky. Yeah. <laughs> We're here. <laughs> All right. Here we are. NAB 2024. Can you believe it? No. It's fantastic. And you have your own booth. Luma Fusion has her own booth in the South Hall Upper. Upper floor. Yep. yep. Come back to the Creator Lab. So Back to the Creator Lab. So it's number S1, SU4142. Okay. Just go... Past Avid and straight on down all yeah, the way back. Yeah, that's exactly right. Pass, go quickly past Avid and straight on down. <laughs> so you must have something to talk about since you have your own booth and you're at NAB again. So, well, first of all, we just come to NAB because we love it. <laughs> well, that's the other. That's that's very that's very true. I do the exact yeah. same thing. But we do have uh, some new features coming out with 5.0 of LumaFusion. We have keyframe easing and bezier curves so you can make any path you want and you can have your your media moving from point to point at different speeds and it's all manually controlled with a beautiful new interface and along with that comes the ability to do speed ramping so this if you look in the background above terry's head let me pull myself up here where am I? I gotta go countdown movies. Huh. Odd. Oh, there it is. Cam link. Sorry. So if you look above Terry's head, that's the graphical interface for adding keyframes. It's a window that's a separate window that's going to be coming up. You can do all kinds of sophisticated keyframe editing, much more sophisticated than what Final Cut Pro has. You can use your finger, you can use a pencil, ease in and ease out, all kinds of things. You can make still frames in that. You can make freeze frames, etc., etc. This is going to be a $20 add-on. You've already paid $29 for the, for the uh, but it's really sophisticated, really, really cool, separate window for keyframing in Final Cut. I mean in uh, LumaFusion. There's the backyard. You can see the clouds. You can see all the nice little clouds. Bird feeders over there. Right there, I don't see any birds or any squirrels or any, we have community cats. But I don't see any, but it's like it's a little windy out. Look at the trees. Very, very cool. Look how green everything is. I'll be out there mowing grass before too long. But that was our Good friends, Terry and Chris from LumaFusion. They have the version 5 coming out. Version 5 is a free update coming out this, this uh, summer. If you want to buy the keyframing add-on package, it's 
once again, they're not charging a subscription. This is, and they got to make money somehow. So they, these add-on packages take sometimes years to develop. 20 bucks is very reasonable. I'd much rather pay, pay that if you need it, if you need it, than a subscription. So we've talked about that many, many times in the past. So let's see what else we have over here for our videos. Oh, here's our friend. This is our friend, good friend Chuck Braverman. We met, I met up with Chuck the last day, uh, Tuesday morning. I was leaving, I left Wednesday, but I was met, met up, up, up with him in the South Hall by Black Magic. Oh, I know something I saw I could talk about. You know what? Something I want to talk about. Okay. We can talk about whatever we want. But NAB, what? You well, at the end, we'll, so we'll plug your uh, document, your uh, your show. Good. Yeah, absolutely. So here we are, NAB 2024. Every year at NAB 2024, I message you and say you're going to NAB. <laughs> I don't know until like the last minute, and then you show up like magic, which happened again this year, right? Well. You know, I don't know. Yes, I haven't been here in like three or four years since before the pandemic. Right. And uh, somehow I was under the impression that it, there weren't going to be many people here. But as you can see, there's only probably 75 or 80,000 people. And I right. think they're all in this hallway right here. They're all waiting to black magic. Yeah, this it's the South Hall seems to be the most popular hall because they're the anchor. Black, black magic is doing some remarkable uh, innovation with cameras, with non-linear editing, with switchers, and uh, I sound like I represent them, which I don't. But uh, yeah, I think it's great that they're doing this stuff, and I think they're pushing, you know, all so the So I'm a big else. fan of DaVinci Resolve. I bought the license, studio license years ago. Final Cut Pro for me, DaVinci Resolve, and Lumber Fusion. I don't need any more. Those three are, fill all my needs from different areas. That was our good friend Chuck Braverman. He has his, he has a series West West Line Dock Online or West something West Docks Online. I forget yet. Look it up. I have access to Logic, but have not installed it. You could recommend some great tutorials for an absolute beginner, and also do you use it in conjunction with the Final Cut Pro only with your music. Certainly with my music, I, I switch from um, Motu Mark of the Unicorn digital performer years ago to Logic and never looked back. D D Motu is fine, but Motu spends a lot of resources on the Windows version. They used to be Mac only, but they don't. So there's, let me just look this up for you. Um, there's a lot of tutorials, on, as you can imagine, on Logic Pro on YouTube, but there's one guy specifically that I recommend. And his name is Music, here's the, here he is right here. Music Tech Help Guy. This guy is really, really good. And he has a great playlist for Final Cut Pro stuff. He's really good. He does a lot of uh, Final Cut Pro stuff. Look at all the stuff for Final Cut Pro. Even Final Cut Pro for iPad. Ultimate Guide to Final Cut Pro 10.7 and 10.8. Look at this playlist. It's just incredible. This is where you want to go for, for Logic tutorials on YouTube. Music Tech Help Guy. Look at all these tutorials. See, this is something Apple doesn't do. This They don't do this. They have no tutorials like this for Final Cut Pro video tutorials or Logic Pro. This you know, they, they just let everybody else do it. So he is probably the number one guy that I'd recommend for Logic Pro. There are others as well. As a matter of fact, uh, Groove 3 is a paid subscription, and they have a really good guy, Eli Cranston. Eli Cran Eli, I forget what his last name is. And he has a lot of really good Final Cut Pro, uh, Logic Pro stuff. Now, here's the thing. You said, do I use it with Final Cut Pro or only with your music? Always with my music. All my projects are with Logic Pro. I use Logic with Final Cut 
if it's a more complex situation or want to use plugins that I have in Logic. I don't use audio plugins in Final Cut Pro. It's just a complete mess. I have the Waves bundle, one of their high-end bundles, and I have a bunch of other ones, my Apollo Twin X, United Audio. I don't use them in Final Cut. It's just a, it's just a mess. It's not, it's not integrated the way it should be. I use them in Logic Pro. So if I need something like that, super clean up or whatever, I'll use it in Logic Pro. Simple mixes, of course I do in Final Cut. Of course. It's just that Final Cut's very clunky. In order to add a compressor to a group of clips, you got to put them all inside of a compound clip. You got to apply it to the compound clip. And then you got to want to make changes. You got to open them up in the compound clip again. And all of a sudden you got this complete the other, you know, all your clips are in another timeline. There's no relation to the main timeline. It's a big, it's a big clunky mess. So anything sophisticated audio wise, I use Logic Pro for. But I can do basic mixes and Final Cut. So I don't, I don't use XML export to Logic Pro. I don't do that. It just doesn't work. Logic Pro's version of XML is versions behind what Final Cut Pro. So if you send your audio to Logic, you can't send your audio back to Final Cut Pro's in XML because Logic doesn't care about the video. All they care about is the audio. And it's just a big mess. It's a big mess. It's not like Black Magic that has Fairlight and editing page and the cut page and the color page and they're all behind the scenes linked somehow. As a matter of fact, Grant Petty talks about some of this. I'm going to put the full interview up probably this week with Grant Petty. It's really cool. It's about five minutes, a little less than five minutes. So that's the deal with that. So if anything, unless, do I expect anything this week? I don't think so. I'd be I'd be surprised if they put an update to Final Cut Pro out Pro up right after NAB. That would be just completely ridiculous. I expect it when the new iPad comes out. I expect it to the new iPad. This is the this is this is what I'm saying now. I expect a minimum of two feature updates for Final Cut Pro every year. A minimum of two. I would love to see three every four months get a couple features in there, unless the ones every two month, every six months are bigger, if they're larger. So May will be six months, five months, let me see. December, January, February, March, April, May. May will be the sixth month mark, okay? Six months since we had the last feature update to Final Cut Pro. So it's the right time. I think if Final Cut Pro team gave us two feature updates a year, every a plus or minus every six months, that would be fine. So if they put one out in May, which I expect, the next one will very likely be at the Final Cut Pro Creator Summit. Maybe the M4 chips are out then. I'm not going to buy any, any other Macs. I got my M1 Macs, MacBook Pro. It's been completely fine. I took it to NAB with me. It's it was great. It did all the streaming every morning, et cetera, et cetera. Let me go over here. Let me just do this. I always do this to make sure home. We're getting comments like we're supposed to be. By the way, I've I've seen I I tuned into a few of the different streaming services that were cover, covering NAB. I don't know how you people watch them. They are the most boring, boring live streams I've ever seen. They're just like, all they do is just, well, let's talk to this manufacturer and see what they have to say. And they'll show the manufacturer doing a sales pitch for like five minutes, 10 minutes, 20. I can go online and see that. I don't, you know, I can go online and see that they were just, I, some of the ones I've seen are just really completely boring hours and hours of boring, boring NAB coverage. And besides, I'm not out, to, I, when I cover NAB, it's always about Final Cut Pro centric for the most part. Not always, but a lot of the times that's what I try to cover. Let's, let's see. So Michael Cioni has a new 
let's see here, a new company. And this is his party that he had. He had a very nice party. He had food there. He had drinks there. He didn't pay for anything. There's Michael right there, probably between the people. And they had darts if he wanted to do darts. Let's just go through this. Here's Michael. Okay. There it is. This is it. This is the guy. Right there. Being clever as he always is, doing the uh, hand on the camera thing. Larry Jordan does tutorials about Phonica Pro Premier. Larry Jordan is a great, great resource for sure. News Shooter does a good job. Yes, there's. I didn't watch News Shooter. A couple of them do a good job. Um, and I, I was interviewed by our friend over there at CineD. Is that what it is? I haven't seen it up yet, though. Would you buy a new Mac? Is auto capturing is only supported on M4 Max? I, I don't think they're going to do only supported. I think it'll be a better support. Usually Final Cut Pro is backwards compatible with a Mac OS and, and hardware. And they're not going to do a version that only works with the latest and greatest because that's going to leave most of your audience behind. You have to remember, as I told this one guy in... Um, this one guy in, in uh, where's that place called? Let me pull it up. Uh, let me see. So here we are having breakfast with Brad and his crew. Pepper milk. Us? That's what it is. This guy. Listen to what this guy says. So this woman says, what do you have there? Let's talk play this for you. What is that? Um, uh, Final Cut TV and radio. radio. That's me. Wait, Final Cut? Final Cut TV and Radio, Dave. Who still uses Final Cut? Come on. Five million people. Real? Oh. Sure. I like Resolve. Yeah. 19, I love it. And I also like Luma Fusion a lot. Yeah. But Final Cut, I've used Premiere, I have it. It's more fun. It's more fluid. So that was the guy that said, Who uses Final Cut? And I informed him, Well, five million people use Final Cut. See, this is what happens. Matthew says, next update will probably be when the new iPads are released. It's better to be more than a compatibility update. Yes, it will. It will. But compatibility with what? Compatibility, what are they being compatible with? An iPad? No, it's already compatible with the iPad. Of course it's going to be more. It's going to be a new feature update for the iPad Pro to help sales. And when they do that, they're not going to release a new version of Final Cut for the iPad without being without updating Final Cut from the Mac. Plus, it's the six months. It's six months. I keep saying this. Twice a year, I like to see feature updates, at least. I don't mind them more often, but at least twice a year. So, new iPad Pro, new version of iPad Final Cut for the iPad to promote the iPad Pro. Oh, since we have the iPad Pro version, here's the new version for the Macintosh. And this all could probably be just press releases during that time. And Final Cut Pro is 10.7.2, whatever features, whatever. I mean, they, Apple's got to be working on auto captions 
and text-based editing, absolutely working on that. No ifs, ands, or buts about that. Would I take a bet on that? I'm more confident of that than I was with Final Cut coming out before NAB. More confident than that. Like I said, I didn't see any of the Final Cut Pro team anywhere at NAB, and I was all over the place. I was in the halls. I was at the parties. I didn't see Final Cut Pro team anywhere. Of course they were there. They said they were going to be there. I'm not saying they weren't there. I'm just saying they weren't visible. They weren't visible to the public. Maybe Final Cut for Mac updates is hostage to the iPad version. I don't think they're hostage because I think the iPad version of Final Cut Pro users is this big compared to 5 million or more Final Cut for the Mac versions. You know, Final Cut for iPad is probably in the thousands. Tens of thousands, perhaps. It's not 5 million. So that would be the tail wagging the dog if that were the case. But I'm saying, you know, when you're dealing with Apple corporate, Apple corporate says, okay, we got a new iPad coming out. We want people to buy the new iPad. We want to give them a reason to buy the new iPad. Final Cut Pro for the iPad with these new updates are a reason for the public to buy the new iPad. This is a good reason. And then they're going to do that, and they're not going to ignore the Mac version. I think the iPad, Final Cut for iPad and Final Cut Pro on the Mac are going to be eh, somewhat updated on a regular basis together. They're going to be updated at the same time, one or the other. Now, Final Cut for the Mac... If they have bug fixes, that could be independent from each other, but I'm thinking any feature updates are going to be about the same time. So, yes, Final Cut for iPad coming out in May. If that if that prediction holds true, I don't know if it's going to. That's what they're saying now. And the people that predict these things are saying early May. Yes, Final Cut for iPad will be updated with the iPad, Final Cut with the new iPad Pro, and... Final Cut Pro on the Mac will be updated at the same time. That's what I'm thinking. And I'm a little bit more confident that's going to happen because I was not confident at all we were going to get a, uh, an update for in time for NAB, but I was hopeful. Well, forget about it. You can't be hopeful with Final Cut Pro team. You can't be hopeful because they, they disappoint all the time. It's got to be more than generic subtitles. They would need to be able to dynamic animate like that in CapCut for Mac, in your opinion. Okay, that's an interesting thing. So anyway, Final Cut, I'm thinking Final Cut Pro update with the iPad Pro. I am not spending, I'm so glad I didn't, I was going to think about, I was thinking about getting an M3 MacBook Pro. I priced it. It was over $5,000 for what I wanted. I'm not spending that kind of money on an iPad, on a, not my iPad Pro, on a MacBook Pro. I'm not spending that kind of money on a new MacBook Pro, not unless it's generations ahead of what I have now. When it's generations ahead, if it's the M4 chip, Thunderbolt 5, maybe a touchscreen, who the heck knows. It's not that I really care about the touchscreen that much, but at this point, the touchscreen versus not touchscreen is just... It's not, not any difference in price, hardly any difference whatsoever. So Thunderbolt 5, the M4 chip are two things that I'm looking for if and when I get a new MacBook Pro. So I'm not in any hurry. I'm fine with my M1 Max, but I will seriously look at the iPad Pro. I will seriously look at the iPad Pro to kind of tie me over until the, I get the new MacBook Pro. And I'll be using LumaFusion on that. I already paid for it. It's already done. I have all the add-on things. So I'll be losing, using LumaFusion on the iPad Pro. I'm probably going to get it in 2024. I'll wait till I see a good price on one.
Matthew says, it's got to be more than generic subtitles. They will need to be able to dynamic animate like that in CapCut. For... I'm not sure what dynamic subtitles are. But animation, mean, you mean like highlighting the text and stuff? Yeah, that would be fine. By the way, thank you for the thumbs up. Fantastic. How do they get balloons to go behind me? I don't understand. I guess it's AI, right? AI is looking at the shape of the human body. Thank you very much for another thumbs up. AI is looking at the shape of the human body, said, oh, we're going to put a balloon up right here behind the outline of the body. That's AI stuff. I think AI was bigger last year at, at, uh, at NEB. I think it was bigger last year. So let's do another movie from NEB. Frame.io. Here's a here's one from uh with Emery. Yeah, yeah. So you, these are the these are the metadata fields. So you can now add any metadata fields you want to an asset. So okay. Come in here to fields. You can see that like let's say it's like exactly what I was just talking about. We're gonna we're gonna create a new field. So this doesn't exist. I'm gonna say I'm gonna call this the platform field. Right, and I'm going to choose the data type. We have a bunch of different data sets. Okay. I'm going to call it single select. And I'm going to say this is Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and X. Very friendly guy. I've met him before at Creative Summits and stuff, but I haven't run into him for a while. He explained all kinds of things to me. This is a new frame. I looks very, very sophisticated and very, very cool. Very, very cool. So we have a, can you explain what text-based editing looks like? Here's what it looks like. This is what DaVinci Resolve looks like. You have a clip. Suppose it's an hour long clip. Let's just say an hour. When you're editing that, in the normal way, you have to listen to the entire clip, which is one hour long. In order to do editing, you have to listen to it in real time. Text-based editing, you select that same one hour long clip, you transcribe it. Once it's done being transcribed, a window will pop up with the transcription. All the audio in that will be transcribed with the text with the in a text document. When I go through a one hour video, I'm cutting out a lot of stuff. People stumble, the dog starts barking, somebody gets a phone call, blah blah blah, or they go off on a tangent that I don't want to talk about or they say something they shouldn't have said, or it's no longer relevant. So a lot of times there's entire paragraphs that I'm not gonna use. The old fashioned way, I have to listen to it in real time and say, I don't want this, I don't want this, I don't want this. With text-based editing, I can look at the text and see the entire paragraph or two paragraphs that I don't want I don't have to listen to it. I can look at it and see it in the transcript. I highlight the two paragraphs that I don't want and hit ripple delete and it deletes the video out of the timeline. And I go through the next paragraph. I like this. I like that. I don't like this. There are too many ums and ahs. Select this next paragraph or two paragraphs or three paragraphs. Hit ripple delete and it deletes the video right from the timeline. It's the quickest, absolutely the quickest, most efficient way to edit long form dialogue in video. It's, it's fantastic. You're not gonna use it if you're doing a music video. Okay, you're not gonna use text-based editing for a music video. That's not what it's this purpose for. It's more for long form. Even if you're just doing audio, the same thing. If you're just doing audio, doing the radio, that's how you do it. Yeah, I really like it a lot. Does DaVinci Resolve let you set a parameter of cutting dead space before a speaking part and after? I don't know. I don't know. I haven't used it that much to see if it come, cuts out ums and ahs. I, 
It probably does. It, I, I think it might. Descript does that. Uh, fill, filler words, they call it. Ums, ahs, pauses that it'll go through. But of course, you're going to have to do something with those jump cuts. But when I'm doing a rough cut from an hour long dialogue or two hour long sometimes, I can get it down to 30 minutes very quickly with just text-based editing. And it's very, very cool. And then also, once the text-based editing is done, you can do captions with that same clip, and it'll put captions on your timeline over top. You have to correct. It's not 100% accurate, maybe 95 90%. It's getting better and better. So then you can have captions over everything in your timeline. DaVinci Resolve 19 Studio, you're editing, text-based editing, directly in the timeline. Used to be in the browser, now you're doing it in the timeline. Much better. So that's what I hope Final Cut Pro gets built in. Yes, you have Lumberjack systems now. You have some other third-party transcriptions. Text-based editing, Lumberjack systems is probably the best for text-based editing. Yes, pollen. Pollen on the East Coast is just, I have, I have trees all over my property. Thank you very much for the thumbs up. It is appreciated. Would you like to see a hybrid magnetic timeline like Numa Fusion and Final Cut? Absolutely. The ability to adjust volumes, for instance, on a track is nice. Here's what, so Luma Fusion, people say this all the time. Oh, they can't, they can't get the magnetic timeline because Apple's got a patent on it. There's no patent on the magnetic timeline. Don't be ridiculous. That's not a, that's not a patentable uh, thing. I mean, they may, there may be some kind of a nebulous way that they describe it in, in Final Cut. If there's a patent on it, LumaFusion could not have the enhanced magnetic timeline. Okay? LumaFusion even calls it the magnetic timeline in LumaFusion. It's an enhanced magnetic timeline because it does things that the original magnetic timeline cannot do. For example, you can lock a track. In Final Cut Pro's jargon, you would lock a roll so it does not move with the rest of the timeline. So when I edit the rest of the timeline, this locked version does not move. It stays stationary. Now, the way I get around that, I do that editing in Final Cut Pro right now. If I'm doing an hour-long documentary, for example, uh, I'm doing a two-hour documentary right now. We're doing a second version of it for showing in July. And I want to see where the 30-minute mark is. And I want to see where the one-hour mark is. And I want to see the 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 uh, the, uh, the we have a break between the one-hour and the two-hour. Intermission. I want to see where the intermission is. And I put markers at 30 minutes, and I put markers at one hour, and I put markers at the beginning of the intermission, and I put a marker at the end of the intermission, and I put a marker at two, at one hour and 30 minutes, and I put a marker at the end. Well, it doesn't work in Final Cut because they're clip markers. They're not timeline markers. They're not sequence markers. Okay. They move with clips. Whatever clip you place them on, if you move the clip around, that's where the marker is going to go. So what I do is I put an anchor clip at the beginning of the timeline. It could be one frame, five frames, ten frames, one second, whatever you want. I put it at the very beginning of the timeline. And I take a title and anchor it to the anchor clip. And I stretch it out the entire length of my timeline. And then when I want to place the 30-minute marker, I click the title and hit the M key. And it's placed on the title. And if I want to place a marker where the intermission is, I go to the intermission, select the anchored title, and hit the M key. Okay? I can do as much editing as I want in the main timeline. The 30-minute marker beginning of the intermission marker, stay put because they're not affected by the magnetic timeline. LumaFusion has that automatically. I don't have to do the anchor clip. 
you can lock a you can lock a track in place or a roll in place and it will won't move that's why we're talking about the hybrid it's it's actually called an enhanced magnetic timeline yes i'd like to see that absolutely would like to see that all righty we got 50 people watching nice little crowd here for saturday morning That's clunky, but effective, I guess. Well, it's clunky because Final Cut Pro doesn't have it built in. It's not clunky with LumaFusion. You just lock the track, it's done. Whatever you place on that track is not going to move. So in Final Cut, you have no choice. If you want, if I want a 30-minute marker to stay still at 30 minutes, how are you going to do it? It's tied to a clip. Every time I move something before that clip, it, the marker is going to move. That's what's clunky, is the way that Final Cut has markers. Thank you very much for the thumbs up. Final Cut doesn't have timeline markers. They have clip markers. All their markers are connected to clips. So that's how I take care of that. And I do that all the time, especially when I want to keep a specific time marker. I don't want it to move. That's how I do it. I have a tutorial on my YouTube channel for that. So... Let's check on the backyard. See if anything's happening out there. It's springtime. I don't see any birds at the bird feeder. You can see the wind in the background with the trees, these arborvitae trees in the background. It's kind of windy. Now, there's the dogwood tree all the way over there, the white dogwood. That's, we have dogwoods on our property. It's gaining flowers. <clears throat> this is what's affecting my sinuses and stuff. It's, uh, it's going to be pollen city here in a very, very, very short. Look how blue the skies are. Very, very short period of time. Thank you very much for the thumbs up. Fantastic. One thing I want to say is thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the sponsors to set for me to go to NAB. This will be dependent off I go in 2025. Luma, Luma Touch, Luma Fusion, fantastic. Hedge for video, Hedge for video. FMC, of course, and our good friend Roger Bolton from Cormelt. Roger didn't even go to NAB, and he still sponsored Final Cut TV. That's how great a guy he is. All these sponsors are fantastic, every single one of them. It's appreciated. I am all these I use all their products and I recommend all their products period these were the sponsors to get me to NAB hopefully they'll be back again next year so our friend Matthew says should I buy the DaVinci speed editor that includes DaVinci Resolve Studio and just resell it it's, it's like $70 more that's what I did two years three years ago $299 for the speed editor and DaVinci Studio. I, I don't want I didn't want the speed editor. I don't my desktop is already cluttered up. I got a stream deck which is compact. I got my keyboard, my wireless, even though I got a MacBook Pro, I have a wireless keyboard that I use. So and I have Stream Deck and I have my Apollo Twin X for audio. I don't want a speed editor. Now, some people use them, that's fine, but I never opened it. I never even opened it. I just said, I'll keep it sealed, and then when I can go ahead and resell it, somebody that wants it, so somebody, I'll put it up for sale locally, and somebody bought it. But, yeah, I'd recommend getting the package. If You just you can always resell the speed editor if you don't want it. They have a new, a new one, right? So instead of a speed editor, they're calling it something else. I forget what it is. Thank you very much for the thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe over there. Absolutely.
Richard, you should host a live stream with those tiny editing tips. Fantastic. Thank you, Rogerio. I'd actually have that tutorial on my, on my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel, my tutorials get a lot of views. I have one tutorial that's got 30,000 views, a bunch of them in the 20,000s and 10,000s. I also get view a lot of views on one weird thing I get a lot of views on. Let me show you the, the most current version of this from the most current version of this from NAB. All right, We're going to the Elon Musk tunnel, LBC loop. This is Elon Musk's tunnel that goes underneath of the convention center and goes from the central hall to the west hall. On this side and go yep. west, or yep. they'll circle around. Yep. Excellent. These are all Teslas. They all have drivers. Make agenda where sessions are over there, the sessions are over here. So, oh, so and I don't want to be walking, so oh, of course man. I'm taking the tunnels. Uh huh. Save a lot of mileage on your feet. I should be walking at least a little bit more <laughs> so I can bring down the calories from all the delicious food you're getting here. Mm -hmm. I won't tell anybody. What model is this one? That's this the is the tunnel. Yes. Very, very cool. Elon Musk also yeah. built, his company also built this tunnel using Teslas and the tunnel. I'm sure that Las Vegas slash the convention center paid he didn't yeah, do it for free. Dash and everything was different. Uh -huh. See, this is what it looks like a roller coaster. Yeah, <laughs> and then we go up into the sunlight, back up. And then you see the west hall. So is this now only dedicated for the convention center? We have a branch that goes over there oh. to the resorts world now. Okay. So that was a tunnel. But anyway, I have on my YouTube channel, I have a lot of Fonica Pro stuff. I have a lot of stuff working around my property with tractors and log splitters and stuff. And I have a lot of Fonica Pro tutorials, which are very popular. But I also have, I do a lot of mobile filmmaking stuff, iPhone stuff and lenses and different gear that I have. So those are also popular. Chris says, that's what I did, but kept my editor. They just launched the replay editor. That's what it's called, mini color panel too. You can also get it with a keyboard if you want. So yeah, so if you don't, if you don't, if you're going to be a mainly a resolve editor, you could use that. But I, I, my desk is already filled. I got three different devices plus my MacBook Pro and I don't have room for a speed editor. And I just, I, I like, I like keyboard. I like keyboard, trackpad, mouse, and then my, stream deck which i can program a lot of stuff in so that's the deal with that so one thing i want to say thank you very much for the thumbs up it's appreciated one thing that i want you just that i want to say is let's give the final cut pro team final cut pro team watches this live stream by the way we want to make sure they feel that we love the final cut pro team absolutely love them That doesn't mean we're going to let you off the hook and let you go at a very slow pace and be satisfied with it. We're not satisfied with that. We like Final Cut Pro. It, we think it's a really good NLE, which it is. But we want more. We want to pick up the pace, especially over during the COVID years. Everybody understands that. But this is software. So it seems like to me, from the outside, the Final Cut Pro team is a walled garden. It is completely 
a walled garden. And they don't listen to people outside of that walled garden. They just pay attention to themselves and a few select people. They don't listen to the other people outside as much as they should. That's the problem. They should listen. They should have more people from the outside and listen to them. I remember in 2019, we were at the Creative Summit and we brought up the dupe detection. And their responses, well, they first off, they said, we hear you loud and clear. So they heard us about dupe detection, and they finally incorporated it, but it took them three years, 2022. But one of the frustrating things is they say, well, why do you want dupe detection? Tell us how you use cases. We don't have to do that. Dupe detection is a standard feature with all professional NLEs, Okay. Go watch how they people use it. It's not our responsibility to convince you that we need something like dupe detection. It's a standard feature. Same with the scrolling timeline. All these years I've been harping about the scrolling timeline. Finally, 13 years later, we get a scrolling timeline. I'm glad it's here. And that made my day at any at um, Creative Summit last last fall. November, in November the 6th or 7th, whatever day it was, we went, to, we went to Apple campus on Monday and they reintroduced the scrolling timeline. Finally, I threw my hands up in the air and said, hallelujah. After all these years, we finally got a scrolling timeline. So like I said, Final Cut Pro is this train. It's like a coal fired train. It's very steady. It keeps m moving forward, but it's not a speed demon. Thank you very much for the thumbs up. It's not a speed demon. Now, you could say you like that better. Or you like the bullet train, that's Da Vinci Resolve, and they constantly put out new features, new features. I think a combination between the two, not as slow as Final Cut is currently, and maybe a little more conservative than Black Magic is, is a good place to be in the middle. But they're not there. Final Cut Pro Team is just slow and steady, slow and steady. A lot of times it's frustrating. If you're watching the NLE race, like we are, and you're looking, and there goes Black Magic, and there goes Avid, and there goes Premiere, and then they have Cap Cut going back and forth. And where's Final Cut? Oh, it's oh oh there it is. There it is. It hasn't moved. It hasn't moved for four months. It's the same place it was four months ago. Five months ago. It stayed still. We like the stability. We like the speed. We like the optimization. Those are base features. Those aren't those aren't feature features. Command post can help with the speed editor in Final Cut Pro. Definitely will work better with Resolve though. Speaking of command post, Chris Hawking has been brought on board with Hedge. He's working with I think Arctic Whiteness, the app. I think it's just called Arctis, Arctic, Arct, Arctic now, something like that, whatever it's called. He's been brought on board to work with that app, so that app should be getting better and better and better, which is great, don't you think? I mean, Paul over there at Hedge has said we didn't buy the Final Cut Pro Library Manager to make money. We just think it's a good tool to have in our arsenal. It's a good good tool for the Final Cut Pro community. So they went out and bought it, or whatever they did. They they acquired, I don't know what the right word is. They didn't buy it. They acquired it somehow, and whatever. They don't have subscriptions except for, I'm not sure, I'm not clear exactly what the new version of Hedge is. So that'll be coming out, whatever that new version is. Is it Hedge? Or no, it's... Uh, Whatever Sam Messman's involved with. Let's see what else we have here. This is one of my places I always stop to eat in and out burger in Las Vegas. In one of the places that I went to, one of the parties, there were a lot, lot of parties. 
was the Filmmakers League, and they had they had a party at a bowling alley. Now that was right where I was staying, real close to where I was staying, so I went to that event. Very cool. I tuned in late today, so I'm not sure if you mentioned this, but what was the surprise announcement or product that you saw at NEB? Well, what was the surprise announcement? I didn't spend a whole lot of time with... I mean, I interviewed... I mean, the thing was, Black Magic. Resolve 19 was a big deal for me. But they pre-announced that the Friday before NAB. They showed it. Grant Petty did a live stream, whatever that was. The Friday before NAB. So that was the pre-announcement. To me, that was the biggest thing, was Resolve 19 beta. It's the beta version. That's what affected me the most. But there was a lot of other things... Hardware-wise, they had a whole slew of hardware. They had a, they announced the 17K, 17, what is it, resolution, 17K camera for late, coming out later this year. So, NAB is fine. It's, it's completely fine. If you want to go next year thinking about it, it's expensive. It's expensive. That's why I need sponsors to come here. It's expensive. It's not too bad. The flights are typically okay for me. It's not. It's not a. It's not like it's um. It, it's like not like Australians coming over here and spending nineteen hours on a plane. That would be just like ah oh, torture for me. But as far as a big announcement, uh, you have to just watch some of the live streams or just go to the NAB show page. Because there's so many different kind of vendors and announcements and stuff. And the, the, I'm only interested in what affects me. I'm interested in anything Final Cut Pro related. Hedge had some big announcements. Uh, LumaFusion had the big announcement of version 5 coming out. By the way, the LumaFusion, 29 bucks. If you pay 29 bucks, you get version 5 for free. That has some feature enhancements. It has a new grid layout that comes free. If you want to buy the keyframe editor, it's, it's going to be a $20 add-on package just like multicam and FCP XML export is. So, but that's version five coming out. Hedge was talking about that all their new products they have coming out, their acquisition of Final Cut Library Man Manager. And I'll be honest with you, I've used Final Cut Library Manager on and off for a few years, but I always get frustrated with it because it either crashes or it does something weird. That's supposed to be fixed now. That's supposed to be fixed. They have the resources behind it. I think, I think that's what Chris Hawking's going to be working on, working on that. So they brought in. So Hedge, Hedge is turning into a really, really interesting Final Cut Pro friendly suite of apps. Not that it always wasn't, but it is. I use Offshoot all the time. When I'm at when I'm at the NAB, I have where is my there it is right there. So I have two of these, two of these crucial X9s that can both go in my phone with the USB-C cable or into my Mac. I can shoot on this with my phone. For, this is four terabytes. This is four terabytes versus the Samsungs. Look at the difference in size between these two. I prefer the little four terabyte Crucial X9. It works on the phone, too. You can work with the phone. Cannot use it on my Lumix S5 Mark II X because that only supports up to two terabytes. This is a four terabyte drive. So I take two of these with me, plug them into my MacBook Pro, and make two separate copies so I have backup copies. Plus, I leave it on my MacBook Pro. I have a four terabyte drive. I have three copies 
when I come home, so I'm, I feel fairly safe of the footage. It's not like anything's mission critical, but it's it's still there. And we'll play this movie, another movie. Well, I'll play a little more Brad's movie. Let me say a little more Brad. We were so I once we got to uh, NAB. This is Sunday morning. We did a little interview with Brad and his crew. I have one, thank you. Kind of like the, the people going up and down the escalator. Let me get set up here. Uh, I'm tired, then. Yes. Uh, <laughs> oh. And I knew Alan. Internet, I mean, did he con connect with you guys? Did he know you beforehand? or? Yeah, so we, us two at least, were connected with a college that he was hiring I out see. of. I yeah. see. Um, and okay. so we, we all met Brad through being hired by Alan. I see. Okay. So, some presents here. So I'm, I'm excited to check those out. I have a DJI, the Mini. Yeah. Mini 2, I think it yeah, is. Yeah, love that. Absolutely. So what do you want to tell the Final Cut Pro team? Because they watch these. Uh, come back to NAB. <laughs> Please. Yeah. Yeah. You should, don't you think? Yeah. Have, have, have some presents here. Yeah. Figure it out. It's, yeah. it's a shame such a good software is being left in the dark like that. Yeah. Looking through all the classes, I mean, I use, I use Resolve and Final Cut Pro, and there's just tons of workshops that are available for exclusively um, Resolve. Resolve has incredible training. Yeah. Free Sorry, I'm sorry, the, the, it was the caption, the mute button was on. So Final Cut Pro team, give us some insight, a roadmap if you can, whatever you can do, a little bit of stuff for a future version of Final Cut. And don't tell me you can't do it because you've already done it. Final Cut Pro Creative Summit, 1044, pre-release version. You showed us, you allowed us to talk about it in public came out six or eight weeks later. 2022, you allowed YouTubers to show us a beta version of Final Cut Pro on YouTube, 10.6.2 with dupe detection and with voice isolation. You allowed it then. Give us the same, give us those little things that are happening. Tell us if text-based editing is coming. Say okay, we're working on we're working on a solution for text-based editing. It'll be out in a future update to Final Cut Pro. Does that hurt anybody? Does that hurt anybody? No, it doesn't hurt anybody at all. It lets your audience in on the roadmap for Final Cut Pro. That's what the that's what we'd like to see. There's some information like that. If you told us things, role-based mixer. Say hey, but we're we're working on a role-based mixer. Solution, we'll have it out when we have it out, maybe the next year, whatever. Don't tell me you can't do it because you've already done it. You did it, Final Cut Pro Creative Summit on 1044. You showed us a pre preview of a version of Final Cut Pro 1044 at the Creative Summit. It didn't come out until December. You allowed us to talk about it, you allowed social media posts about it. So there's one time you did it. Ten in uh, in the year 2022, March, the month before NAB, you allowed YouTubers to show a beta version of Final Cut Pro on the internet. So that's a second time that you've done it. You you can certainly you pick and choose these times when to let 
the Final Cut Pro faithful, the five million of us, know what's coming up. You give us a roadmap. That helps the situation of slow, slow development. We hear you about text-based editing. We hear you about an audio mixer. We're working on solutions that'll, you don't have to even give a time frame. Say we're working on them. We hear you loud and clear. We're working on solutions and we hope to get them to you. Thank you very much for the thumbs up. Fantastic. That's to all you, all the congratulations to you. So, I think I have one more clip to play for you. This is, that was Bradley, our friend Bradley. Here's my saying goodbye to NAB. I was, went outside the uh, convention center, and this is my goodbye to NAB. Here we are, NAB 2024. Tuesday, I'm getting ready to head back to the East Coast. Another year of attending NAB. Lots of people here this year. I'll be surprised if it's not 65, 75,000 people attendees this year. We had some good events. Black Magic, of course, was the main attraction as they have been for a long time. I got to talk to Grand Petty for five minutes. Will I come back in 2025? We'll have to see how that goes next year. I'll semi-plan on it, but it depends on a lot of different things, what I'm doing at that point, and sponsorship and the whole nine yards. But anyway, Final Cut TV has been broadcasting from NAB 2024 every morning, doing live streams, doing interviews, anything Final Cut Pro related, that's what I've been doing. Also, we went to Michael Cioni's Strata party, and I stopped by his booth and I got an explanation of what Strata is exactly. Thanks everybody for watching, subscribing to the channel, Richard Taylor TV. Like and subscribe as usual. Maybe next year we'll have some Bonica Pro News at NAB. I'll talk to you next time. Thanks for tuning in. So I wanted to do a closing thing from NAB at the convention center, which I obviously did. Now, you know what? 1216, we've been on for two hours and 15 minutes. What is that? Two hours and 15 minutes. There you go. Final Cut Pro team, we want to give you a thumbs up. Absolutely. We just want things to be done a bit faster. I know we don't understand all the intricacies of adding features and doing this and doing that, but communicate with your audience. Communicate with your audience. You don't do that. There's been no communication with your audience except since the Creative Summit last November. That's December, January, February, March, April. Five months with no communication with your audience. The five million people. I'm not talking about the closed garden that you have of this stuff. This is, you keep everything in this closed garden. You have 5 million Final Cut Pro users. Communicate with your users. Don't continuously say, you can send your requests and thank you for the thumbs up. You can send your requests in, and then there's no communication. Communicate with your audience. That's what I recommend. If you're gonna continue the, the pace that you have, That part's, that's part, obviously, we have no control over, but communicate with us. There's nothing wrong with you saying, hey, we're going to have an, a, a, we'll have an update for Final Cut Pro feature update every six months, plus or minus. Sometimes it might be five months, sometimes it might be six months, seven months. We're not going to commit to every six months, but eh, it's an average we're going to try for, at least for the next year or so. That doesn't hurt anything. You're not giving away any state secrets. Just keep your audience, remember, your audience, 50-some million Final Cut Pro users, keep us informed. Give us a timeline. Give us something something that we can hold on to. The, the letter that came and went, Hollywood letter, oh, yeah, well, what happened there? What happened with that? It just disappeared into vapor. You may be communicating with a handful of people in L.A., 
But the 5 million Final Cut Pro users heard zero. We didn't get any of the promises that were made in Apple's response. I don't know if the Final Cut Pro team did it or Apple corporate. We didn't get any information about what's going on there. Once again, you're keeping us in the dark. There's no reason for that. There is absolutely zero reason. Now, if Apple corporate is, you know, if they have a hold of your strings and they're making you do that, that's a different, that's a, that's a different issue. That could be part of the reason. What does it hurt to have a little presence at NAB for the public? It's, it doesn't hurt anybody. It doesn't hurt us. We'd love to have presence there. Why can't you meet up with some people at NAB? You do with the Creative Summit, but you don't at NAB for some reason. Well, I'm not saying you don't, because you have. In 2022, you did put out an update to Final Cut Pro for NAB, and you put out updates for Final Cut Pro in the past. Last two years, no Final Cut Pro information, no Final Cut Pro update, no Final Cut Pro anything at NAB, which is the biggest pro video audio event of the year in the world. It's by far bigger than everybody else. So think about it. Think if you can get an update next year. We want it. The users, the users want Final Cut Pro, the team, to at least communicate with us because you're not communicating with us. You're not. You expect us to send in bug reports and requests and stuff to the email, to the uh, portal, but there's no communication after we do that. It's it's you don't you can't expect that to be a one-way th- communication portal. It doesn't work that way. You have to give us timeline, give us something like you already have in the past. Don't tell me you can't do it because you've already done it. You've already done it on multiple occasions. So you obviously can do it. You're choosing not to do it. Why? Don't know. Anyway, get 10.7.2 out. Beginning of May, what is today? Today's April the 20th. So another two weeks, maybe three weeks. Get 10.7.2 out. And hopefully it has some cool features for us. Hopefully it has some cool features. Don't know if it will. Well, I'm counting on it. Whatever 1072. I don't if it was a bug fix, then we don't want to go to 1073, whatever. But listeners of Final Cut TV, do you want the Final Cut Pro team to be more open? Do you want them to give us some hints, roadmap? You don't have to promise. I understand you can't promise things, but like You can't say, hey, 10.7.2 is going to come out shortly. Maybe say before WWDC. And we got some features in there we think you're going to like. That would go a long way. That would go a long way to the Final Cut Pro community. Thank you very much for the thumbs up. Looks like I don't see any birds out there. I do not see any birds out there. So when I go to NAB, if I go to NAB in 2025, I'm not there to cover the whole convention. That's not what I'm there there for. I'm only one person. I'm specifically there to cover anything Final Cut Pro related. Anything that I can dig up. If I can't dig up something, I will try to generate some interest in Final Cut Pro. But this year and last year were both very, very difficult because there's just nothing really. Final Cut Pro is dead at NAV. There's no, it's dead. It's no help from the Final Cut Pro team like they did in 2017 and 2018. They had actual presentations from the Final Cut Pro team in 2017 and 2018. And each time they had hundreds, hundreds of people that attended that were interested in Final Cut Pro. 
but there's no presence at NEB. It's just like, okay, well, let's talk about Premier. Let's talk about Black Magic. Let's talk about Avid. Let's talk about X, Y, and Z. You're just not, you're leaving money on the table. It's free advertising. Spend whatever you have to spend to do a, do a presentation. You can't depend on third parties to do your publicity for you. It's not the way it works in the real world. You have to step up. You have to step up and engage your 5 million Final Cut Pro editors. Not just, oh, we're going to keep secrets from you. We're not going to tell you anything. Because you've done it in the past. You've given us stuff in the past. Okay. I'm very disappointed with Final Cut lately. There's nothing going on while Black Magic is killing it. Even Premiere is an attractive option. It really falls behind more and more. Like, like I said, unfortunately, Final Cut is a very slow, steady moving train. It's not a speed, not a bullet like they have in Japan. They're choom. It's not, that's not what it is. I doubt if it'll ever, ever be that, unless maybe version 11 is going to jump through the roof. I don't see Final Cut leapfrogging other NLEs at this point. I don't think they're going to, I don't, I don't see that happening. Slow and steady. Slow and steady. Here's another four to six update feature for you. Wait another six or eight months and we'll give you another batch of update features for you. Everybody else is zoom, 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 especially with AI. Whether that changes with the M4 chipsets, I don't know. The Vision Pro market is this big. It's a tiny fraction of a market compared to 5 million Final Cut Pro users. Okay, so pay attention to the 5 million and dedicate a little bit of resources to the Vision Pro. Steve Morrison, yes, it's very disappointing being left in the dark. I'm not going to leave Final Cut Pro, like it too much, but Apple, show you care. There's ways you can do communication with your users. Let me know. I'll tell them. Send, shoot me an email. Say, Richard, you can say X, Y, and Z. Okay? I have a nice size audience. I got, I'm approaching 5 million YouTube views. I'm, I'm not 5 million, sorry. Sorry, erase that. 500,000 YouTube notified me. I'm approaching half a million YouTube views. Now, that's not that many for people that are getting millions all the time, but for me, it's a lot. I wasn't expecting that, so I've monetized it, and et cetera, et cetera. Sometimes I feel like Apple is really not interested in keeping up Final Cut Pro. Now, we've heard from the Final Cut Pro team themselves. Final Cut Pro team, pay attention to this. We've heard from the Final Cut Pro team themselves, and I brought up the whole Aperture question to the Final Cut Pro team in public at the Creative Summit. I was the first person to ask a question, and my question was, First off, I said, thank you for whoever up there on the panel is responsible for the scrolling timeline. And then I said, I've seen this question. You have, you have 5 million Final Cut Pro users out there, millions of Final Cut Pro users. I see this question all the time. Is Final Cut Pro going to go the way of Aperture? Is Final Cut Pro going to go the way of Aperture? They said, categorically not. No way is Final Cut Pro going to go the way of Aperture. They said, not only do we have plans for the next, for Final Cut Pro for the next six months, that's now, six months is right now, let's see what the, the plans are. We have plans for Final Cut Pro for the next four to five to six years. It's not going, not, it's not that they're not interested in it. We'll have to see what those plans are, but that's what they told us. In public. That's what they told us in public. Thank you very much for the thumbs up. It's appreciated as usual. So what else? I don't plan on being back this week. I don't, I don't expect there'll be a Final Cut Pro update. Q 
communicate with your users. No communication, keeping us out here and out here is nonsense. There's no way that communicating us would be a bad thing. Whatever way you have to do it with corporate stuff, whatever regulations they have on you, there's ways to do communication with your audience. That's the biggest problem as I see it. The speed of updates is another problem, but if you tell us, we're working on X, we're working on Y, we're working on Z, that helps alleviate some of that frustration with your extremely slow pace of development. Now, you know, yeah, we're always, I'm always looking for the next version. I'm always looking for Final Cut Pro 10.7.2. I, like I said, I expect it to come out with the iPad. I'd be very surprised if no feature update comes out with the iPad, or bet at least between now and WWDC. That's, let's just say that. Whether I, I expect it to be the iPad. It seems like a good time to, to release a new version of Final Cut. Any other comments? The Fonica Pro team is listening. They're watching these live streams. So any other comments? Before I head out of here, I'm going to uh, go see a band. i got to film a band tonight. Some friends of mine. It's their last concert, so I'm going to go see them up in, uh, in Maryland. Any, uh, anything else? There's a lot of, there's a lot of, it, there's, NAB is as active as ever. It's active as ever. 61,000 people. Yes, it's down from 2019, which had 93,000, but it's about the same amount as last year. So hopefully that continues to be steady or go up. Eventually it'll go back up again, I think. Anyway, as far as the Final Cut Pro team goes, Let's give them a round of applause, please. Even though it's frustrating with their pace of development, let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> That's for the Fonica Pro team. They do watch. They do see your comments on this show all the time. So, All right, everyone. I'm going to get out of here. We've been on for two hours and 30 minutes. That's enough for today. If there is an update to Fonica Pro this week, don't expect it. Of course, I'll come back on. And I can I can pop up. I have a couple of interviews I got planned. And I can pop up at any time during the week. Let me see something here. Tim messaged me. Yeah. Um, pop up during the week. And I can come back at any time. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Don't forget. YouTube channel, subscribe over there at Richard Taylor TV. Anything else going on? Don't forget my sponsors, Hedge for Video, FMC, LumaTouch, big sponsor, and Cormelt. Our friend Roger Bolton didn't even come to NAB, and he still sponsored me to go to NAB. That's how good a, good a friend he is and a good a person he is. And of course, our friends LumaTouch and FMC and Hedge. They're sponsors to get me to do reporting from NAB and the Creative Summit, both. Very, very cool. Subscribe over there at YouTube. All right, everyone. I'm going to get out of here. Thanks each and every one of you for stopping in today. I'm going to take a screen grab of that. And you can communicate with me. All my social media is Richard Taylor TV, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, X, over there on the X platform. So we'll be back next Saturday at 10 o'clock if things go as planned. Might be back during the week. But probably there's no updates this week. Ernest says, have a very blessed day. Absolutely. I appreciate it. All right, everyone. My name is Richard Taylor. I will talk to you all 
If not before, I'll see you on the next Saturday. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in, each and every one of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're the best audience of any Final Cut Pro live stream. This audience is absolutely the best of all. Talk to you all later.